37 years ago today. Where were you, Bob Costas? I was at Wrigley Field in Chicago, and it didn't even occur to me that this is yet another anniversary of the so-called Sandberg game until I heard someone mention it on the air this morning. Um, And for those too young to remember it, the key thing here is that the Saturday afternoon game of the week in the 70s, 80s, really to the cusp of the 90s, was a whole different thing than just a random baseball game that happens to be on on Saturday afternoons now. That was the only national telecast of the entire week in baseball. In 1984, the cable superstations that carried the Braves and the Cubs were in their infancy. So if you were in a non-major league city, that was your one chance to see Fernando Valenzuela face Johnny Bench or whatever it may have been. Um, And even if you did live in a major league city, most of those cities only televised maybe 25 or 30 road games for an entire year. It was an entirely different landscape. The Saturday afternoon game of the week sometimes got ratings of 9 and 10, ratings equal to primetime hit television shows. So Tony Kubek and I find ourselves at Wrigley Field in Chicago. It's the Cardinals against the Cubs, so it's classic. You always see some red shirts in the stands at Wrigley and some blue Cub shirts and hats at, at Bush Stadium. It's a beautiful Saturday afternoon. The Cardinals jump in front 9-3. to three. The Cubs come battling back. It's 9-8 to eight when Ryan Sandberg comes up in the bottom of the ninth to face Bruce Souter. And to show you how different the game was, Souter's been in the game for two innings already. He's trying to close it out. <laughs> Sandberg homers into the left center field bleachers to tie the game at 9-9. They go to the tenth. Willie McGee doubles home a run. At that point, Willie McGee is hit for the cycle. He later scores what appears to be an insurance run. The score is 11-9. to Two outs, nobody on. Bob Dernier, the leadoff man, walks on a 3-2 pitch, a disputed 3-2 pitch. Up comes Sandberg again. Suter still on the mound. Sandberg hits the ball to almost exactly the same place. Looked like the same fan could have caught them both. Now the game is tied 11-11. The place is going berserk, and eventually the Cubs win the game in 11 innings, 12-11. to The game, to this day, is still as the Sandberg game. It's a regular season game that has a title. The only other one I can think of is the Pine Tar game, where George yes. Brett briefly had his home run disallowed at Yankee Stadium uh, and went berserk, memorably berserk, as he came charging out of the dugout. But that could never happen today, which is not a knock on modern baseball. But there's so much baseball available all the time. I'm sure there have been games just as wild and just in their own place as memorable as what happened on June 23, 1984. But it did not reach the entire country in quite the same way. Mm. The movie The Natural had come out only a month or two before, and at some point in the broadcast after Sandberg had hit a second home run, I said, we must be looking at the real Roy Hobbs here. Nice. Uh, this, you know, Sandberg's The Natural. And at that point, at Sandberg to this day says that that was the turning point of his career. It marked him as an MVP candidate. He did win the MVP. The Cubs, who were forlorn forever, as they usually are, emerged as a contender. They came within one win of making it to the World Series. And that one game stands out as the signature of a Hall of Fame career and the signature of the Cubs' rebirth. 37 years ago today. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.